It has been a long time, everyone. Andy Sean 45 here. I hope you all have been doing well, and I hope you've all had a great summer up until this point. Oh, and I hope you guys like that little uh, that little intro before the video. Um, I know some of you might think it's a little corny, but uh, I just wanted to have a little fun and maybe add a little pizzazz to my videos. <laughs> But um, also, as I'm sure you guys can tell, we have had a scenery change. Um, I just got finished moving into a new place, and I just finished uh, getting settled in, so hence the new background. Oh, I noticed uh, Big Ball Daddy still have your uh, re reward up from uh, your Bracket Buster Challenge a couple years ago, so I thought you'd appreciate that. So, but anyway, guys... Three weeks away from the start of the 2012 college football season. And I don't know about you guys, but I am excited and I'm ready for some football. But on top of that, I'm even more excited for the fact that three weeks from now, I will be in Dublin, Ireland for Notre Dame's season opener against Navy, hanging out with my buddy Shamrock Jerry. So that's going to be a lot of fun. You know, My first time overseas uh, should be a great time. But I just wanted to get on here for a few minutes and... Uh, get warmed up and talk about Notre Dame's upcoming season. Now I'm not going to break down all the games because that's what I do my previews and recaps for. But um, for starters, our schedule this year is, oh, how should I say, absolutely brutal. Um, of the 12 opponents on our schedule, five of them are going to be ranked to start the year and three of them in the top ten. Now we have our usual opponents that we play year in and year out. You know, USC, Michigan, Michigan State, Purdue, um, Boston College, Navy, Stanford. And then on top of that, you throw in teams like Oklahoma, Miami, BYU. So really, there is no easy game for us on this schedule. Not one of these teams uh, are we to take lightly. Not one of them. Now, of course, based on the schedule alone... All the so-called experts have come out and pretty much, as usual, written us off before the season even gets underway. Um, you know, sit coming out with things like, oh man, how is Notre Dame going to compete against such elite talent like that? Well, you know something? This Irish team has some elite talent of its own. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a fan, but I honestly believe that this Notre Dame football team has enough talent to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other team in the country. And besides, this type of schedule is the kind that we should be playing on a more regular basis anyway. I mean, throughout the years, how many times have we Irish fans heard from, you know, the haters, the doubters, oh, well, Notre Dame plays a weak schedule, uh, Notre Dame doesn't play enough ranked opponents, blah, 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 blah. Well, to all those people that have been whining about that, shut up. Okay? You got what you asked for. So, anyway, with the schedule, I say... Bring it on. I'm ready. But anyway, aside from the schedule, the top three uh, issues with Notre Dame right now, and let's face it, there's a lot, of, a lot of questions that need to be answered. Now the first one has pretty much been the big story all year, the quarterback situation. Now we all know it got sh uh, shaken up quite a bit when Tommy Reese got arrested back in May. Um, and, of course, as we all know, he has been suspended for the season opener against Navy, and he will not make the trip to Dublin. Now, my take on, on Tommy is this. Even had he not gotten arrested, I still would have gone with someone else anyway. Now, I'm not saying that Tommy is a you know, bad kid or even a bad quarterback, but he's just... I've said this before, he's just not the right quarterback for this spread offense that Brian Kelly runs. You know, he's a very one-dimensional quarterback. I mean, he, he has a decent arm, but he cannot run. There's no, he has no mobility. Now, I'm, he's done some great things for us. I mean, he's 12-4 and four as a starter, has had some really good games and some, you know, really, really nice bright spots in his, in his career. But it's just... In the long run, it's just not going to work. That's just my opinion. You know, you have to have a quarterback that is dual threat. You know, a quarterback that can make plays with his legs as well as his arm, you know. And 
Ever, guys like Everett Golson and Andrew Hendricks, they have the capability to do, uh, to do that. So, yeah, like I was saying, Tommy Reese's arrest has really shook things up quite a bit. Um, right now, I, it's definitely a two-man race at, at the moment in training camp um, between uh, Everett Golson and Andrew Hendricks. And nothing against Gunnar Keel. I mean, I think he, he has the potential to be a great quarterback, but, I mean... Even though he was a highly uh, five-star rated quarterback out of high school, the fact is he's still a, a, a college freshman who has to learn the ropes. I mean, it's a whole new level when you get to college. So, honestly, what I think is going to happen is Keel will get the red shirt, and the, the only way he will play is if it's absolutely necessary for him to. And who knows, Brian Kelly could have other plans, but this is just what I think. So... Right now, it's definitely uh, between uh, 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 Andrew Hendricks and Everett Golson. Myself, personally, I like Everett Golson. I just think, uh, you know, he, uh, he has the goods. You know, he great athleticism, great mobility, a gun for an arm. Um, but, you know, he has his flaws as well as Andrew Hendricks. Now, with Golson, his flaws are basically... Uh, understanding the mental aspect of the, of the game and getting that down. I mean, for example, back in the spring game, he burned two timeouts in the first quarter because he had trouble getting the plays in. You can't have that in, a, in, a, in an actual game. That'll hurt, that'll hurt you in the end. And also, he's been um, having trouble from what I've hear, been hearing from reports. He's been having trouble uh, reading the defensive, the defensive schemes and the coverages and so on and so forth. So that's some things that he has to work on. Now, Andrew Hendricks, now this is where he has the slider, the slider edge on Golson. He's actually seen playing time. Um, you know, Hendricks has a great, uh, great mobility, a uh, big, uh, big physical quarterback. Um, but the one problem I've noticed with him is his throwing accuracy has been off. I mean, some of the interceptions that he's thrown have just been really bad. Like the one in the Champ Sports Bowl last year, he pretty much right to the linebacker. So that's something that uh, Hendricks has to do is he has to make his throws. He has to work on his accuracy. But um, but like I said, you know my like my favorite is Golson. You know I, I hope to see him in there uh, come September first against Navy. But at the same time, I won't have any problem if Hendricks starts if it starts either. But they both, regardless of, of who starts, they have to show that they've improved and that they can play this game and that they know what they're doing. Now, Tommy, Tommy, on the other hand, going back to him briefly, it's still not a bad idea to keep him to still keep him around after the first week. I mean, um, like I said, I, I hope uh, Kelly sticks with the, the new face that he puts in there, but having Tommy around still isn't necessarily a bad thing because if you know, if the worst comes to worst, if the, the first two guys ahead of him just fall apart, then you have a safety blanket in Tommy Reese because he does have the experience. He knows the playbook best of uh, any of the quarterbacks on the team right now. So, you know, it, it just would be a nice, a nice safety blanket or security blanket, whatever. Now, the next big topic of, or area of concern with Notre Dame is the cornerback situation. Now, myself personally, I expect the two corner slots to be filled by uh, Bennett Jackson and Will Wood. But uh, and from what I've heard so far, Bennett Jackson pretty much has a spot, um, a one spot uh, taken already. So the second one's going to be a battle between low, uh, guys like Low Wood, uh, Josh Atkinson, Cam McDaniel. I think there's a couple others in there too. But I expect it to go to Low Wood in the end. Now, I can understand... Uh, a lot of Irish fans being concerned about this, and myself, I have my own too. But it's it's mainly because we haven't seen a lot of these guys. We they haven't really gotten a lot of playing time, so we don't know what all they can do. But of course, you know, Low Wood did have the interception return for a touchdown against Maryland last year, and you know, these guys have been asked about it, and uh, Coach Kelly said it the best. I mean. These guys may not have seen a lot of minutes on the field, but they've been around the system. They know what they're capable of. And, of course, we the fans, we don't see what goes on every day. We don't, oh, we don't know what all these guys are doing. And 
So that's basically what basically what it is is we don't know exactly what we have, and it's just I think in this situation just more of the weight is killing us to see what it is that we actually have. But I mean, you know, we could either be really good or we could be really bad at that position. Who knows? But I think these guys will surprise a lot of people. And then the last air. Uh, quote, area of concern, but I don't really consider it a concern, is our wide receiver situation. Now, of course, uh, we lost Michael Floyd to graduation, which is a you know big loss for the program. But at the same time, though, we have more than enough talent on this team to make up for the loss of Floyd. You know, we got guys ready to step up like T.J. Jones, uh, Devaris Daniels, who just... He only had a couple of catches in the spring game, but you know he has pure, he's pure athleticism right there. He can he can jump, great hands, the speed is there, big physical uh, wide receiver. Um, then you have other guys like uh, fifth year senior John Goodman who will get his chance to make an impact, and as well as got, um, uh, Robbie Toma. And then on top of that, we have three incoming freshmen. Uh, uh, guys like Devontae Neal, Justin Ferguson, and Chris, Chris Brown. and You know, really, it wouldn't surprise me if these three guys make an impact right away. Now, with Neal, I've heard a few rumors that they could move him to the defensive side of the ball with the, uh, you know, with the cornerback situation, but that's, that's uh, just rumors. Um, honestly, I think they will keep him as a wide receiver. So don't be surprised if you see these three guys make an, an immediate impact. So... Um, yeah, wide receiver situation I'm not really too concerned with. So, but yeah, guys, um, well, that's really all I can say about, uh, you know, for a, a quick overview of the, of the season to come. But really, I, that's what it, what it boils down to is it's just a matter of, you know, the weight and the excitement and just not knowing exactly what all we have. So, um... Just three weeks to go. That's all I can really say. But all I know is I wouldn't just write this team off just yet because I really, I really do think that this team, they're just, they're just uh, not too far away from just breaking out of their shell and just put, putting all the doubters in their place. And I think they can do that this year. It's not going to be easy. But I think we have the potential to have a really good season, uh, some, uh, something better than the past uh you know, the two eight and five uh, seasons that we've had. I really think we could be a 10-win team, but we'll just have to wait and see on that. Well, that's really all, all I have to say for this video. So, um, yeah, the next time you guys see me on video, it, it will be coming to you from the shores of air in Dublin, Ireland. And my good buddy Shamrock Jerry will be joining me for my preview and recap from the for, uh, week one game against Navy. But not only uh, will I be filming the uh, a preview and a recap for that, I will actually be documenting the whole trip. So, well, at least as much as I can anyway. So, um, it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, also, uh, to all you Irish fans out there, don't uh, uh, make sure to go check out my affiliation website, uh, NotreDameInTheEndZone.com. I have a link posted below here in the description box. And, you know, just come on, come on and sign up. It's free. Join in the conversation. And it's not just Notre Dame fans. Any other fan of any other team can, is, you're more than welcome to come join this website. Just, uh, we just ask that you keep it civil and you keep it clean. Oh, and one last thing before I go. To the founding fathers of Notre Dame in the endzone.com, uh, Rick and John. I'm not going to release all the details here, but I just want to let you two guys know that I'm thinking of you. And you guys take it easy, all right? So with that, everyone, this is Andy Sean 45 signing off. Go Irish!